Hello, everybody, and welcome to the introduction to Code Exchange with a bit of a more deep dive. So I would like to tell you what is it, how can you do it, and how can you specifically get value out of Code Exchange? I would like to tell you a bit about myself. I, my name is Florian. I'm a developer advocate at Cisco DevNet, and I have a software and networking background. Um, I'm based in Germany, um, in Frankfurt, and my focus is actually IoT. So I'm focusing more on the IoT perspective, network programmability, and AI and, and EMM, ML. So maybe you know about this, uh, you're browsing around uh, on developercisco.com. Uh, maybe you've used as well uh, a lot of the videos, uh, the challenges. Um, maybe you've also did, uh, like did some self-guided learning labs there. And um, you, you're thinking right now, okay, now I really want to start uh, doing some code. Or uh, maybe you, you already did some code and maybe you're already a code guru there and, and start, started to work on some projects, right? But uh, maybe you've encountered some problems there or some challenges in the end. Um, you're starting and you have this empty window. So you need to start somewhere. And it's usually, I know, maybe, maybe you know it, maybe you feel it, it's difficult to start with an empty uh, editor page. So sometimes it's something. Uh, sometimes it's really good to just focus there, or like to get some code, uh, modify it, and and start with with some template out there. And this is exactly what the definite code exchange uh, is about. Let's also get some other, or in general, some some general challenges there. So what we have here is on the left side some code, and then also on the right side some code. And uh, from from the beginning, like in a couple of seconds, you don't know what uh, what is a good code? Like uh, you maybe see some documentation, but then is it official code? Uh, do you use it? Like how, how, how is it exactly? And this is basically uh, why code exchange is coming in. So um, it will help you to find the right source code. So you can filter uh, uh, some programming with programming language. You can filter the source code with uh, some really cool technologies there. Um, there will be also some, uh, you can see some staring or like some, some ranking system there, what gets you visible for, uh, for good, good projects or good repositories, which are out there. Um, and the whole code exchange, uh, repositories or like collection of repository will help you of identifying what are authentic source code repos or like, you know, just some weekend projects like. Um, what uh, maybe just some some scripts are in there, but uh, they won't help you further that much. And uh, and then uh, building a community around open source projects. So this is also what this whole community aspect is about. Is basically to getting and bringing people together with the same mind or with with basically the same goal, um, but with with different approaches there uh, and work together on one on one big project there. And later on, I will have some examples with this one as well there. So uh, this is definite code exchange. So this is basically, you can reach it under developercisco.com slash code exchange. And I would like to get more into a deep dive here, how you can use the Cisco code exchange. So we are here at the um, classic at the definite homepage, developercisco.com. And you can access code exchange simply by clicking this um, icon here. So here at the start page, you click on, uh, on code exchange and you can already see that you can look for some code. You have featured repositories already there, or you can, for example, find repositories by product categories. And usually I would like to start with a classic DNA center one. So for example, if I would like to get to know more about the APIs of the Cisco DNA Center, I just search it here, like uh, click on the Cisco DNA Center. Then I see several repositories here. Um, if I would like, I can select some languages out there. So basically I, I only would like to do something in Go or I only would like to do something in Java or, or C Sharp and so on. But this time I will just go for the Python one. Um, and then you can also select or filter uh, the uh, results by technology. So if you're only collaboration focused with WebEx, you can go for collaboration. If you're only focused with networking, um, like classic networking with iOS 6e or so, then you go for this networking um, technology tab here. Since I already see my repository where I would like to go, this is the DNA uh, top five. 
So these are some really cool, uh, simple star, star getting started scripts uh, for the Cisco DNA sensor API. So let's click on this repository here. And now we are at the page, the specific uh, DNA center top five um, uh, repository page. So what can we find here? So we find here the um, uh, description name. So basically the header description, um, and then as well on the red, right side here, some meta information. So who is the owner of this repository? Uh, who are the contributors here? Uh, what are the categories like networking, programming languages, um, and then uh, what is the license of this repository? And uh, what's more important is like uh, you have a documentation here. So every Cisco DevNet repository, like what we have here in our code exchange, has a really good documentation out there which can get you started. So what you see here, you can see like at one side, there are some really cool scripts there. So for example, this is the network device.pi Python script, which will show all of the networking devices in the inventory of the Cisco DNA center. Then we have the interfa interface device PI. So these are all uh, shows all the, in, in the interfaces connected to a specific device. And you can already see um, how you can use the device, this specific, uh, specific script, which is also as an example written here. And now, what if, what if you would like to dive more into this one? So you would like to get started there. And uh, I remind you the empty editor uh, window basically here. So um, I go on GitHub. So every repository is synced and, and linked basically to a GitHub repository. GitHub, if, it, if you're not familiar with, it's like a, a cloud-hosted Git service uh, where you can store your code uh, with, for free, with a free account there, and others as well can basically commit to your code, like work together. You can work together with uh, anybody in the world, basically, on your specific um, uh, project here. And if you would like to see more about the code, or like we would, we would like to dive right into this one, we just click here on the Python script and then go right into this one in the Python one. I will zoom a bit more here and you can see here, it is a really nice Python script where you basically see, you will get um, the single device API from basically from this REST API URL. And you can, I won't go into detail more, but you can see here, this is basically how, how it is done. And now I would like to go back here and say, okay, so how basically, uh, like you would like to go with this one. Now. So you would like to get the devices there. So how can you do this? You can basically simply copy paste it. So you can, can just uh, copy the script and paste it in your, uh, in your editor. Or like this is the power of, of Git and uh, of the GitHub service here as well. You can just clone the whole uh, repository here uh, to your desktop. And you can use exactly these files which are in here as well. So let's get do let's let's do this. I will copy here the link to this GitHub. And now I am in the um, as you can see here. Now I am actually in my command line on my MacBook, and I will just do a git clone command and paste the website or the the address of this repository in there. Then I click in, and then as you can see, it's cloning. It's cloning all the script there. So I will just uh, change the directory to uh, this DNA top five here. And then I will check what are the devices, sorry, what are the files which are in there. And you can see here with just one command, you have already all the scripts down on, at, uh, on your laptop there. And now let's do also a fun part and open it in our empty editor, which won't be that empty anymore. So as you can see here, we have an open, we have an open window. It's an empty one. And now let's get started. So we just open here one of uh, what we just downloaded here, the DNA center top five. We have all the scripts already ready um, downloaded here. We just open it and voila, we have it already here in ours in at home, basically in our, in our uh, editor. You can of course open it. Uh, open other um, uh, other files as well here, and directly start working here. So if you would like to, when we go back to our uh, to our script, 
if you would like to um, uh, to change something here or you would like to add something here, you just go here, uh, write some other code, um, and uh, and there you go. And of course, you can run it directly here in the browser and uh, and test it. And as you can see here, yes, no module uh, is installed, so I need to set it up a bit. But anyways, you can uh, definitely work straight ahead uh, from basically from the code exchange repo, from the template, what what basically the community gives you. Uh, and um, definitely gets you start working in an accelerated way. When we go back now to the code exchange, we actually have also other really cool um, bigger projects out there. So for example, and this is uh, right here, uh, WebEx Teams SDK. So this is also featured here. You can see 98 stars as well. Um, you just click on there and you can already um, see as well, this is basically uh, the uh, open source project of the WebEx Team SDK. So if you would like to know more about this, or you would like to contribute as well, or you would like to um, get, get uh, behind the scenes view, basically, you can definitely go as well here um, via code exchange in order to see how the WebEx Teams SDK is being built, and especially how you can use it as well here. Also similar to this one, if we go back, uh, we, can, we would like to look for some SD1 uh, action here. So lately it's, it's more and more uh, um, requests are coming up. And uh, again, you can check, for example, the, the language. So again, I would like to have some, some, some Python action with SD1. Um, and there are also some really cool um, um, uh, repositories out there. So basically here um, contains the uh, Python SDK uh, for, um, for Cisco SD1. Uh, you have also here uh, some vManage APIs. So basically some examples for the vManage APIs for application aware routing policies. Um, also some SD1 templates there. Um, also with some examples with the um, SD1 REST API of vManage. So basically you have a really cool repository out there uh, what you can use. So at first, definitely select what kind of API you would like to see or like what kind of um, request or what kind of goal you have. And then you simply click on uh, the specific um, API or a specific repository there. And then you can definitely see the documentation. Is this what you're looking for? What are the current functions as well? How can you use basically the, the source code there or the, the scripts which are available there? Um, information about uh, the requirements, how you can set it up, and then usually what we also put in there are the outputs. So basically, what, what is it, the output? And the outputs of this specific script, script would be the device list or the template list, for example, or some session monitoring. So as you can see here, if you would like to know more again about, uh, about this one, about the scripts and, and look behind it, uh, or look at the source code, basically, you can again go on the synced uh, GitHub repository there, and you can here already see uh, the Python scripts of okay, how can you basically uh, do these commands? How can you um, also expand it? Um, and more importantly, as well, you can already see the updates there. So, is it a more recent project? Is it a, um, an older project there? And we can definitely see this is a more a more recent project here. So when we go back uh, to the Cisco Code Exchange, I hope you know uh, what this is all about, that uh, you can definitely take a look, just, um, uh, just search it, uh, explore the repositories via the languages, uh, via the technologies uh, where you're in, um, also via the product categories um, here as well, um, that you can find here some really good starting points uh, and you don't need to start with an empty, empty editor window. And now maybe you would like to, or, or maybe you ask yourself, so who is actually um, contributing to this really cool repositories uh, or like to this really cool library? And it's a simple answer. It's you. It's, uh, it's uh, developers. It's uh, partners. It's uh, customers. It's Cisco employees. It's um, everybody basically can contribute to this code exchange. And it's simple as that. So when you have a DevNet account for free, uh, you have a right button here, which is submit. So when you click here, you can actually submit your project, your project, what you host on GitHub 
to this definite code exchange. So you can, for example, um, uh, insert your Reaper URL here, um, also click in what kind of technologies um, this repo covers, basically. Um, if you have, of course, the permission there, uh, if you're a Cisco employee or not, um, and then you can submit it. There's just one thing there um, is basically the requirements. There are like just not a lot of requirements, but just some is definitely uh, it needs to be relevant, of course, like to the Cisco technologies. It needs to be publicly available uh, on GitHub and licensed as well under an open source license. So, uh, for example, MIT license, Apache license. Um, I wouldn't worry that much about it. Basically, if you can put it on the Apache or MIT license, that's totally fine. Um, it's a classic open source license there. Um, and then we have as well um, a Cisco sample code license here as well. So uh, when we open uh, this one, we can actually uh, see that uh, we, uh, what we created with legal here as well, uh, we created a Cisco sample code license, uh, what you can use. So if you're unsure, or basically, if you're a Cisco employee and, and unsure, um, uh, also just use a Cisco sample code license, and then you're good to go to share it also on the Definite Code Exchange. And then this is not done yet. So like from your side, this is done, but in order to ensure the quality or in order to ensure that actually the, we have a quality code and the qual quality repos out there, our engineering team is actually checking if the documentation is correct. If, for example, the code works. Um, so basically, not everybody like everybody can basically submit it, but not everybody's uh, project gets automatically published. So we have, of course, some guidelines there uh, and some some requirements. Uh, what needs to be done? So basically, um, a good documentation needs to be out there. The code needs to run so without any problems, basically, um, with um, by our support engineers. Um, and then, of course, um, it uh, it needs to be it needs to be licensed uh, in, like I said, in open source license or in a Cisco sample code license. There. So we have also a dashboard for you. So here you see the admin dashboard. So basically, you can check um, what kind of um, commitments you have. So what kind of sorry submissions you have, uh, what kind of submissions were already approved. Um, and then which are supplied, uh, um, are declined, or for example, if uh, somebody contacted you about please change, uh, change some of this or like please add some documentation there. So with that being said, this is a really good overview of the uh, DevNet uh, code exchange, but there's one thing I, I would still like to cover. We have a cool code exchange uh, challenge, which I really would like to share. So when you have a code uh, just lying around there and uh, you just have it for yourself, this is not a good stuff for the community. So if you would like to share your code, get your name out there uh, and also give something back to the community, we are definitely would like to thank you for that with a special edition shirt. So basically, if you would like to win a special shirt, uh, just get your code out there, go to code exchange, submit it and get it approved as fast as possible. Because the first 100 approved and published submissions, they win a special edition shirt. So if you'd like to know more about this, what kind of rules they are and how you get the shirt, uh, just go to developer.cisco.com slash code exchange. We have all the information there and definitely get your code out there, uh, give something back to the community. And I wish you all the best uh, to win this really cool t-shirt. With that being said, I hope you learned something here. Uh, go get your code to Code Exchange. Happy, definitely create. Thank you very much.